Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. If you are new, if you're not, welcome back. But if you are new, please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. And make sure that everyone gives this video a thumbs up. And make sure that you hit the notification bell so that you can be reminded of all my videos when I put them up. And reminded of when I do lives. But definitely make sure you hit that notification bell so that I don't get buried in the algorithm. And people can find these videos because these videos that I do are something that people need to hear. I apologize for not being out here on Friday. But as everyone knows, um, that Hurricane Helene came through and hit a lot of people Thursday um, and a lot of people were left without power people were left without anything so I wanted to wait to do this to make sure that people heard the message but I'd like to start out with some prayer first for these people that were affected <coughs> So I ask that you would please join me in praying for people who were affected by this hurricane. And that these other storms that are out there now will, will pass. I need to um, do something real quick. Oh, never mind. Anyways, um, so I'm going to pray and we will continue as soon as I am done praying. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you right now humbly before you. We ask, Lord, that you would forgive us for anything that we've done, anything, Lord, that we've done against you or against our brothers and sisters that we have not asked for forgiveness for. We ask right now, in the name of Yeshua, that you would forgive us for anything that we have done wrong against you. And Lord, we come to you and we ask, Lord, that you would be with all of these people, Lord, who lost their belongings, who lost their homes, who lost family members. And we just ask, Lord, that you would be with them, that you would provide the comfort that they need. That you would provide shelter for those who are left without shelter. Father, there are so many out there, so, so many people who were affected by this storm. Please, Lord, have mercy on your children. Send the help that is needed. Provide the funds that are needed, Lord, for people too. Replace what they lost. And I ask, Lord, for, for those of your children who are financially able to help people, that you would send them to these people to help them. That you might use this as an opportunity for them to give you the glory, Lord, that they are able to help. I ask now that you would open the eyes and the ears and the hearts of everyone who is listening tonight, that you would open, just open them up, Lord, to receive what they are about to hear. 
We give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Yeshua's name, amen. Now, I really want to talk to everyone tonight about, well, about the fact that we all need to start coming together. We all need to start praying for people who are lost and for people who walked away from the Lord. We are fast approaching a time where it's going to be difficult for people to come to the Lord. It's going to be difficult for people to know him and accept him and follow him and love him. The further we get into these last days, the further we're going to see people pulling away from the away from the Lord and we need to get to these people before it's too late. And the only way that we're going to do that is by telling them either in person or online, there's always a way that we can do it, but we have to do it. Because once God lifts his Holy Spirit off of this earth, it's going to make things more difficult for people. And the enemy is going to be able to slip in and pull them away completely. We don't want that. God doesn't want that. So we need to try to do this while we can. Get the word out while we can. It's always urgent that people know about the Lord, that people know how to come to him. But it's even more urgent now that we're in these last days than it ever was. So we need to make sure that we're doing what God wants us to do. And maybe you're saying, well, I don't know what God wants me to do. I have no idea. How do I know? Well, in the Bible, we were told what we were supposed to do. We were supposed to be examples of Yeshua, examples of his love, showing people his love through us. Well, we can't do that if we're being judgmental, if we're being uncaring, if we're being unloving. Because I, I was just reminded today, the one command, the one commandment that Jesus said was the most important, was the greatest, was love. So the question is, are you showing people that you love them? And I'm not just talking about people that you think are deserving of your love, but everyone. See, we don't pick and choose who we love because that's not what God said we're supposed to do. You don't get to pick which people you like, which people you don't like, which people that you're going to show God's love to and which people that you're not.
See, God doesn't do that. Jesus didn't do that. And we're not supposed to do that. If we're going to show the same love as our Lord and Savior showed when he walked on this earth, then we're going to have to learn to love everyone regardless of how you may feel, regardless of what may have happened between you and this person. You still have to love these people. You still have to show these people that you care about them. If it was something that happened between the two of you that caused an, an argument, caused you to not want to talk to each other anymore, well, now's the time to make things right. Now's the time to forgive. <clears throat> forgive, forget, let it go. Give it to God. That seems to be something that us as humans have problems with. Is we get upset with people and we hold grudges and we don't want to let go. We insist that that's it. You wronged me. You did something wrong to me and you're never going to be forgiven. You're out of my life forever. But you see... That's not showing God's love. That's showing the opposite. That is showing what the enemy would want us to do. Not what God would want us to do. Because God wants us to love. He doesn't want us to hate. He doesn't want us to feel cold towards people. I don't care what that person did to you. How badly that person may have hurt you. There's no excuse that you can give God as to why you don't love them. That he's going to say that's okay. Look at all of the things that we've done as people to offend God. To hurt him. To turn against him, to walk away from him. Things that we've said, people using his name in vain. Look at all the things that we've done. Yet he still did what he did for us so that we could be saved. Out of love. There is nothing that anyone can do to you, say to you, that God would say, it's okay, go ahead and, and hate that person. Go ahead and never love that person. Never going to happen. See, we're forgiven of anything that we do. We're forgiven of anything, no matter what. Because in God's eyes, sin is sin. It doesn't matter what it is. He still forgives us. And I think that if anything out there is going to be a good example, it's going to be what he did for us. We need to, we need to look at our Lord and Savior. And we need to learn from him. How to forgive, how to forget. We can't stay mad at people for the rest of our lives. We need to forgive them. We need to forget about what happened. And if they're not saved, we need to let them know about the Lord. We need to let them know that there is a better way of life than what they're doing now. So I'm going to type in, <clears throat> excuse me, what the Bible says about, let's 
forgiveness. And forgiving. There we go. Forgiveness and letting go. That's a good way. Okay. <clears throat> See, so the Bible says that forgiveness is important and that people should let go of anger, bitterness, and slander. And there are Bible verses that actually talk about it, which it's going to go into right now. Matthew, oh no, that's not Matthew, that's Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32 says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ has forgiven you. <clears throat> so, Jesus forgave you, Yeshua, forgave you of every single sin that you ever committed in your whole life. But you can't forgive the guy down the street that may have done one little thing that made you mad. <clears throat> you can't forgive that one person. who said something to you at one point in time and you just find it completely unforgivable. But that's okay, right? No. That is not okay. And it never will be in God's eyes. I'm sorry, I was just getting a drink. Um, Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15 says, For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So if you don't forgive people, He's not going to forgive you. I know that sounds kind of harsh, but it's not. It's not fair. It's not fair that. We're supposed to. Have him as an example. To live with him as an example in our life. And he forgave us, but you can't forgive others. not that difficult of a task to do it really isn't you forgive and you let it go okay Colossians chapter 3 verse 13 says bearing with one another with one another and if one has a complaint against another Forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. That doesn't say you also should forgive. You also might forgive. It says must forgive. I understand that there are sometimes there are things or people who really really said or did some harmful things to probably everyone out there everyone out there is probably <clears throat> or i should say everyone out there not probably everyone out there had someone at some point in their life either say something or do something to you that you feel is unforgivable but you know what God doesn't see it that way. Neither should you. I have had so many people in my past that did things to me, to hurt me, 
in one way or another. I was bullied when I was younger. Bullied, picked on. Um, had things that weren't nice done to me. There was so many things. Things that I will never forget. Because they're always going to be in the back of my mind. But I don't hold grudges against the people who did it. Because God said I had to let it go. So I did. And I don't hold anger in my heart for these people anymore. Will I ever forget? Well, sometimes forgetting is really hard. But the more you let it go and the more you forgive in your heart, the easier it will become to let it go. Because as soon as you start feeling any hurt coming on from a past situation, just talk to your Heavenly Father about it. Tell Him how you feel. And ask Him to help you to let it go. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14 says, This verse tells people to strive for heaven which means letting go of the past, forgiving others and themselves, and moving forward with God. Now, did you hear what it said? Forgiving others and themselves. So even if you're holding on to something that you're angry at yourself for. Maybe you did something, said something, and you're holding anger against yourself. You can't forgive yourself. Well, if Yeshua can forgive you, God can forgive you. You can forgive yourself. You need to, you need to forgive yourself and let it go. Because if Yeshua says that you're forgiven, then you're forgiven. It doesn't mean you're only forgiven by certain people. It means you're forgiven. It means let it go. Let it go. Do you know how angry I was at myself for letting myself fall away from God? Do you know how angry I felt at myself when I started walking back with him again and looking back at all the things that I did? Do you know how bad I felt about all that? Well, you see, when I came back, he forgave me. But I also have to forgive myself. And I still have a lot of problems with that. And I still talk to him a lot about it. But he forgives. Many, many times. We, we need to do the same. Against others and against ourselves. And let's, let's see, like Luke 6, 37 says, Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. That says a lot. It's really not that difficult to forgive people. It really is not. It is so easy to forgive people. But we have to let go and forget what happened, what they did, what happened between you. You have to just, you have to learn to look past it. If you can learn, if you can learn to look at past mistakes and 
things that you might have done or said when you were younger. If you can learn to laugh together about things, maybe like, wow, that was really stupid. I can't believe that we actually got into a fight over something like that. That's so ridiculous. I mean, if you can learn to look at it together and look at it as foolishness and realize that you almost gave up on an important lifelong friendship you'll see things differently I had fallouts with friends I think we all have and to the point of telling each other you hated each other you don't want to talk to each other anymore ever again And then you feel really bad about it when you sit and think about it. But you know what? Straighten things out before it's too late. Because, you know, we're all getting older. We're not getting any younger. And we don't know if we're going to have tomorrow. Our friends don't know if they're going to have tomorrow. Now, wouldn't you feel awful if you wanted to forgive someone? You wanted to make up with someone and then you found out that something horrendous happened and you missed the opportunity. It happened with my one friend. Her and I had constant fallouts with each other over the years. We knew each other for many years, but we had constant, constant fallouts with each other. And I found out that she was very sick. And I actually got a chance to talk to her, thank goodness. But just the fact that she's gone now and knowing that I actually had a chance to talk to her took a big weight off my shoulders. And when I found out that she actually came to know the Lord, that took an even bigger weight off my shoulders. Because I know that I'll get to see her again. <clears throat> but there isn't anything that anyone can possibly do to you that could cause you to not want to talk to them anymore for the rest of your life. Oh my goodness. Okay, so Ephesians chapter 4 verses 31 and 32 says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you Along with all malice, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. I know it may sound like a lot, but it's not. It's not a lot. It's actually really simple. I just wish that everybody could open their eyes to see it. I really do. I'm seeing a lot of death. I'm seeing a lot of people that are leaving this world. And it makes me do a lot of thinking about all these people. Did they know the Lord? Did anybody tell them about the Lord prior to their passing? I mean, it's just really, really difficult to think about. I 
I see parents that are raising their children to love the world and the worldly things, but they're not teaching them to love God. They're not teaching them to love each other. They're not teaching them what they should be teaching them. I was unable to have children. I tried. I did. So I never got that opportunity. But I did get the opportunity <clears throat> to work with young children in a preschool setting for quite a few years. And every one of the preschools that I worked with was actually a Christian preschool. And I made sure that I told those children about the Lord. And I made sure I told those children about being nice to each other and loving each other. And I made sure that I taught them things that they needed to be taught. Because it irks me to see the way some of these parents nowadays are raising their children, if you want to call it that. <clears throat> you cannot you cannot sit a child in front of a television set all day and let that TV be your child's babysitter. Because what is going on in the world nowadays is what that TV is showing your children. It's showing them violence and hatred and that it's okay to change who you are. Basically telling them that what God made you was a mistake. It's, not, it's, it's so not okay. <clears throat> we need to take we need to take children away from television and electronics and let them be a child. Let them live a life like we lived when we were younger instead of sitting in front of the TV all day or playing video games all day, learning violence. Well, I, to this day, to this day, I tell God all the time that if, if there's a child out there that doesn't have any place to go, doesn't have a home, is being mistreated, or whatever it is, and my door's open. Because he knows. He knows that I love little ones. He knows that I love children. And he knows that I would give a home to a child without a problem. And that that child would be raised knowing Yeshua as their Lord and Savior. I just wish that the parents out there would do the same thing. I really do. So, there's nothing in this world, nothing in this world, that is strong enough to convince me any different as far as love goes. Love is something that we all need. From the time you're a little, a little baby, from the time that you are born, you need to know love. 
We thrive for love. We thrive on love. If you take a human being and you take them from the time they're a child and you separate them from, from love, that child's going to grow up with some serious problems. Because we need to be loved. God made us that way. Just think about that, guys. I want you to I want you to think about that. Love isn't something that we can just take a measuring cup and say, here's a quarter cup, that's enough for you. We need to feel love continuously. Every day of our lives. And some people might say, well, what is love? <clears throat> God is love. God is love. And again, if you forgive others their trespasses, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. It isn't normal for people to stay angry. And I'll tell you why. It's here in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 and 27. It says, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Because that's what he wants. See, he wants us to stay angry with each other. He doesn't want us to love each other because he's the opposite of God. God wants love. God wants us to do good. God wants us to do love. And he doesn't. That's why he... That's why he splits up marriages. That's why he splits up friendships. Because he doesn't want us to love each other. He wants us to be absolutely miserable. And have nobody. But see, he's not a friend. He's nowhere near a friend. He wants to see us destroyed. He doesn't care. He doesn't care if you're miserable. He doesn't care if you're upset. He doesn't care if you're lonely. God does. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 1 says, A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Remember that. Before you say anything harsh towards anyone, the best thing you can do, and I'm saying it from experience, is if you and a loved one or you and a friend come, in, come to a disagreement, Walk away before you say anything angry or something that you don't mean. Walk away. Wait until you're cool and calm and collective. Go pray to God about it. Ask him to, to help you with how to handle it. Then go back and have a conversation. But don't fight because that's what the enemy wants. I really dislike I dislike the enemy's ways of doing things. All right. Oh, I wanted to I wanted to redo this if I can get to it here. Let's see. <coughs> Forgive me for the um <coughs> for the voice thing. Okay. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 23 and 26. Or 23 to 26. Have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but be kind to everyone, able to 
teach patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance leading to a knowledge of the truth and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. <clears throat> so don't let him don't let him get his hands on you and do that. That's what he wants. And I was actually reading about this today about giving things to God, letting it all go, give it to God. Don't hold on to it. Including anger. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So don't keep anything from him. Give it all to him. Let him know. Well, he already knows, but let him know why something might be sitting so heavy on your heart. That you're having so many issues with forgiveness. <coughs> and ask him to help you to let go. Ask him to help you to understand how to let go, how to forgive, and how to forget. I've actually noticed that some of the things that I would let sit on my heart heavy I find it that I don't really think about it that often anymore me personally I believe that that is because the Lord took it from me he is helping me to forget it's not because I choose to not remember it's because he's helping me to not dwell on it. Don't wait until it's too late. That's all I can say. Just like I said before. Don't wait until it's too late. Number one. Everyone's getting older. And like I said. We're not promised tomorrow. We don't know. That we will. Be here tomorrow or the next day. That is why when I wake up every day, I say thank you, Lord, because he gave me another day. But we also don't know what's going to happen in these last days. We don't know when the church is going to be taken. We don't know... <clears throat> what's going to happen in this world and we don't know that we'll ever have a chance to forgive this person again or say hey we need to just put this behind us we can't keep we can't keep on this way you know i mean it's not that difficult to say it's like look I'm just giving you an example. So you go up to the person and you say, hey, you know, we've been friends for a long time. We never should have let this come between us. We need to just let it go. I forgive you. Will you forgive me? It's just, it's that simple. Life is too precious. Our lives are just here today, gone tomorrow. 
So we need, we need to learn to love like God loves us. We need to learn to look past mistakes, stupid mistakes. And we need to show the love that our Lord and Savior told us that we were supposed to. So I'm not going to drag this out. I didn't want to make this a really long message, but I do, I just do want you guys to know that it is really important that you think about what I said, that you think about anyone out there who you may have been holding a grudge against for whatever reason. And you may want to go to that person. And you may want to just say, look, we need to, we need to stop this. Enough is enough. I pray that this helps someone out there who needed to hear this. I don't know why God put it on my heart to talk about this, but that was what I felt I needed to talk about, and that's what I'm talking about. So let go and let God. And if anyone out there who's listening had a issue with me, I forgive you. Will you forgive me? I don't want anything to stand in between me and anyone else out there. I want to know that everything's good between me and whoever it might be. <clears throat> this is the time that we should be loving each other and caring for each other and praying for each other and lifting each other up not putting each other down. Keep me in your prayers. I'll keep you in my prayers. All right, I'm going to close in prayer now, and I just pray that you all have a very a blessed evening. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Lord, I don't always know why it is that a certain subject gets picked for me to talk about, but I know that it was from you. I believe it was from you. And I just pray that you would touch the hearts of everyone out there, Lord, that they would be able to forgive, forget, and let it go. I pray, Lord, that there wouldn't be anyone out there who isn't touched by this word. I know, Lord, that this, this had to be for someone out there. Someone needed to hear this. And I thank you, Lord, for using me as your mouthpiece to give words, Lord, that you want given. I ask, Heavenly Father, that you would touch the hearts of each and every person out here. That you would open people's minds, maybe their memories, maybe they forgot that there was someone out there that they had a falling out with, that you would bring it to mind so that they could forgive that person and they could be, they could be friends and they could leave the past behind them. Thank you, Lord. It's in your name that I pray. Amen. I also wanted to ask um, if anyone is out here that does not know the Lord, is anyone out here who doesn't know Jesus, Yeshua, as their Lord and Savior. 
<coughs> Sorry. Just like I said before, we're not promised tomorrow. Don't wait until it's too late if you don't know him. Ask him to come into your life. Ask him to be your Lord and your Savior. Acknowledge who he is, that he came down from heaven, that he was born of a virgin birth so that he was born without sin, yet he took on our sin. And he died for us so that we could be forgiven. And he rose three days later, and he is sitting at the right hand of God right now. And he is returning very soon. So I ask that you would please ask him into your heart today as your Lord and Savior. I thank you guys for listening. I love you all. And I will be back again very soon. Have a blessed day. I love you.